Okay, so, oh God. This is gonna be kind of informal, I guess. If any of y'all came to my other talk. Yes, no. I ramble a lot and I'm just, I guess this is exactly how I would talk to you if I talked to you without a million people in front of me. Um, my name is Amy Dansby. My internet address is uh, Amy DD and my Twitter is Amy Double D. Um, this is a, I guess a high level overview for um, bots in games. Um, my background uh, specifically is um, in game simulation um, and programming. I have a few friends that actually moved on and they work on uh, the civilian side for SpaceX. So they get to do lots of cool simulation stuff and I get to make fabric move. Um, <laughs> so uh, a few games I've worked on, some of them you may have heard of, some you may have played, and some you may have hated. So um, there's always been a very big controversy um, in games that have an intellectual property that follows uh, a film. Um, if you came to that last talk, I briefly mentioned that, that for, I think for E3 one year when we had Captain America, uh, the trailer was done, but the movie was behind. So we couldn't show the trailer for the game because the movie has first rights to show the shield or whatever new costume he's wearing. So there's not too much freedom and, um, and some things like that. Um, my specific thing for um, what I worked on was uh, for Thor's cape. So if you do anything for simulation or any animation, animation is just a character and you're moving stuff. It doesn't really matter. But then when you add a player that can control that character, it's very um, computer intensive to calculate all of this geometry to be able to move these capes and anything that's a natural fabric in a natural flowing way. So, I don't know if you've seen the no capes. Um, this will kind of be, we'll see like how the internet is here because I was like dropping earlier. So, <laughs> hopefully this will like not be the case right now. Um, so, we're gonna go over Watson. I have a, how many of you actually use Unity or Unreal, like game dev? Okay, and y'all play games too? Like what's everyone playing right now, specifically? Anything? I just started Monster Hunter. It's pretty good. Yeah, anything? Make games but don't play games, that's what happens. What are you playing? Lots of games? I had an obsession with uh, The Witcher 3. Uh, if you haven't played that game, you need to play that game. And then it tells you how many hours you've spent playing that game. Yeah. <laughs> Forever, yeah. I'm like, that can't be right. Um, so one of the big things about dialogue and conversation and something that The Witcher does very, very, very well is um, their conversation, their massive multiplayer, well not multiplayer, massive open world. And that is very, very, very time consuming. As you know, they've been working on their new game for Cyberpunk and I believe it's been four years and they still have two or three more years to go. Um, they create a lot of their own frameworks. But I kind of want to talk about Watson. So I don't know if anyone's downloaded Watson for Unity yet. They have an SDK, I think they just announced a few weeks ago. Anybody played around with it yet? Anybody ha uh, found it frustrating yet? It is, their documentation is not very good. So, um, <laughs> the tools are very powerful. Uh, my only kind of complaint about Watson is you can get up and running on their free tier, um, but you are still very limited, like if you were gonna roll it out for like a production and you needed, if you're gonna do language translations, I think you only get a thousand a month. So if you have, you know, someone's in your game, you know, being silly and sending, you know, a hundred things, next thing you know, cha-ching, cha-ching, you owe money for, for some of this. But um, I guess one thing also, um, w uh, Watson is supporting everything in Unity except for the uh, web player. So, sorry <laughs> for all you people using that. Um, one thing that like chat bots don't 
I'm sure everyone has used a chatbot. I'm tired of the chatbot. I'm like, I don't care when your store hours are open. I, I mean, I do care, but like, it is this repetitive dialogue dump and it takes forever. It's like, hey, I just need to know this one thing. And it's like, hi, hi, how are you? I'm fine. What can I do? It's like, in games, that would be ridiculous too. That's when people are kip skipping all of the cutscenes. So, actually, let's see if this will play. Just hope you're a better writer than you are a liar. Dark, but I got a soft heart, so I gave it to him. Fascinating story. Any chance you're nearing the end? <laughs> and, I mean, they do do it very well, um, but there still is a, these dialogue dumps that chatbots use that are completely unnecessary. Um, so if you're not familiar with The Witcher, uh, they've created all their own stuff. They have 35 hours of dialogue. Um, and those are just for like cut scenes. So just thinking about like as far, especially if any of you are programmers, like how computationally expensive that is. Um, and they kind of go the route of a, a data-driven model. So instead of you um, coding this and you're gonna say, I'm gonna sit down, they actually are doing all of these set animations. So you have 35 animations and you're doing a data driven. So if this situation is sitting, then they have these pre-configured animations. So it cuts down their production time. It's pretty clever. All right, here's a, this is from also from The Witcher. Wait a minute, do y'all you know who Chuck Norris is? Ah, it's a Texas thing, but. You'll, you'll get the idea. Witcher! Please, I need your skill. There is this monster in our town, and it is killing all our men. You have to help us, please. How much will you pay? I'll give you everything I have, as will every man still standing after you saved us. Please hurry. It is in my house, right in this moment. Come, come. You should leave this town if you want to live. How dare you talk to me like that? Do you not know who I am? No, I don't. Who are you? <laughs> You do know who he is. <laughs> Keep it. This one's on the house. <laughs> Roundhouse kick. <laughs> <laughs> so those are a few of my friends. But the obsession of people playing games like this, it's like if you ever read any of the narrative books where it's the choose your own adventure, you want to feel that what you're doing is actually having this, an outcome of, of the game. And that's one thing they do extremely well. Um, all right, so let's get into the fun part. So as far as uh, what you need, I guess, besides the computer, um, if you don't have Unity, you can download it for free. You can use the Watson version with the free version. Um, you do need an IBM Bluemix account to use Watson. I don't know if I exit if this will go to my... Hey. How do I show my screen? <laughs> I need an adult. Maybe. But I'm going to switch back and forth. Is this full screen? Mm. Ah, clever. Now I can't see. I also left my glasses on the plane, so. That's oh, okay. So when you sign up for a, a Bluemix account, there's this uh, Watson conversation. I think that says light. Can you guys even read that? Clayton. Or let me. So when you, so 
is the weirdest thing. So here's the light version. It gives you your limitations of what it, what it would cost. It can get kind of pricey. Um, we actually use AWS on our back end, but my work wouldn't let me talk about that, so. <laughs> Okay, so why that creates that. How do I get back? Cool, okay. Okay, so let's think about um, dialogues for like games that you've played. So if I ask you, hey, I want to, um, can you close the window? I'm cold. You, in a, in a normal game, it's a scripted dialogue. There'd be one choice, yes or no. But the advantage of working with things for bots is um, you can use things for machine learning because what if that person replies with a question? So instead of not answering your question, they say, oh, actually, I'm kind of hot. Can we just leave it halfway? So not only do they not answer your question, they're asking you another question. But that is a natural form of language, and that's something that's very powerful for Watson that you can take advantage of. Um, I'll be talking about The Witcher a lot because they did this very, very well. Their, their idea, to um, similar for th things like bots and utilizing the, their power, they have a base set of animation, like Lego bricks. And they take all those base and they make the little castle. Hey, but no, but if they have uh, 35 sets of animations, they can turn those into hundreds and thousands because they have some that are in an idle state, they have some that are sitting, some that are laying. And since they are completely data driven, they have their code and their animation. They are not coding, you know, code this for the situation to sit here when the sun is low and you're wearing this outfit. I'm sure that's probably like how everyone has done it at some point. And you're like, oh, this stinks. So their, their model for this is very, very clever. Um, I think this is stuff for, for Blue Mix, just for y'all. Hey, it's cut off the screen. But I will put those up there for, when you, for you guys so that you can download them. But we're going to go through it. Um, OK, so now the fun part, I guess. So I kind of want to know any. Do you guys anybody play Fable? Any of the old Fable games? Yeah, those games roll. Remember the Demon Doors? S who just whistled that? <laughs> yeah, so the Demon Doors were something that um, I had never really seen before, like in any games I had played. You approach these Demon Doors and they tell you a riddle, but they don't tell you the answer. And um, I always, there are like certain situations. It's like you have to come back, be wearing this armor at night, and they don't tell you any of that, but I love those choices. I think I have one somewhere. Huh? Oh, you are not one of them, are you? My eyesight's not what it used to be. One was a gallant knight. His plate armor was so shiny. Probably what did my eyes in. Then there was an evil mage. Wore the darkest magical robes you ever saw. The last was a rogue. A bandit. Bit like the chaps here. Where is the gallant knight I await? And then it shows you like what you have to do, or at least like this person did specifically. But in the game, I, I loved it and I hated it because ah, you didn't know the situation. You, the gallant knight. Where is the evil mage I await? Yeah, but there's a ton of them. Um, I guess the biggest thing I'm trying to get you guys to take away is when you start using any of these bots or these services that don't do dialogue dumps like you do if you're going to make a like a normal chat bot. Um, nobody's going to do that. They're going to be wanting to skip through your scene and sit. Th that's not the point of it. Um, 
Watson has a lot of APIs that you can use. Um, I tried to work on a demo before I came here that can grab real-time data based on a hashtag on Twitter. So I was trying to grab the hashtag for Code Motion Rome. So what happened is when you're in your game and you're chatting with this bot, it brings up things based on your location and that that Twitter. So all that feed is live. It also freaks people out. They're like, how does it know this? And um, as far as animation, anybody doing it for like animation or lip sync or anything for this, uh, like schematics? No, yes, no. So the nice thing about um, a lot of the built-in features for Unity for the, I guess you don't always have to match the, uh, the lip sync up directly. Um, some of them can be like a chat in the game or like a terminal window in a game or a demon door riddle and you can't figure it out. But I wanted to show, so let's actually do some, some fun stuff. This is just, if you ever remember how it used to be when you'd have to script out every situation in a dialogue tree that could possibly happen, you know, you have four paths at the end, you know, you have a path where if you're, you're good, if you're neutral, or if you're a bad character, the outcomes are different. Fallout does this very well too, but it used to be, you know, you have some input, you have your algorithm to solve, then you have an output, and my bad drawing, but the you know, whatever the time it is to solve this problem based on, you know, in over and over and over again. Um, it's the sorting. It's computationally expensive and it's wasteful. So if I gave you it's the old phone book, I'm giving you a phone book and I say, all right, you need to find John Smith in the phone book. And there are 50,000 pages. What would you do? How, how would you find John Smith, like before? I think I actually wrote all my... It's a riddle. It's a demon door. So, go ahead. Sort it, yeah. That, that, well, that's how you used to do for all the programming stuff, yeah. But say you're going to pick it up and you split to the middle and you get half. So you're trying to... You can't skip every two pages because then your John Smith may be on that page that you skipped. Um, you know, so else, you know, you go to the next page and you keep going and you going and going and then I guess else you give up and, um, but that's kind of how it used to be for these situations. Or if you've ever had like Alexa or Google home, it's like, I don't understand you. Um, those are things that I think can be solved with a lot of the features built in through, through Watson. So let's see. Um, this is the what I was talking about for their data-driven dialogue specifically. So instead of coding each animation specifically for this animation is sitting for this character, this is her idle one, you create your base animations and then based on the situation, your, all you have to do is call that in your code for your animation. Super simple, right? Kind of. Okay, now let's do the code. If I can get out of here. Wait, 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 wait. Can you see? Ugh. I can't function in Unity without a mouse. <laughs> um, I guess as most people know, the problem with a uh, calling things like through Watson with uh, some of the APIs is it's slow and w Watson has issues parsing and returning all of the JSON data so you know it's if they're returning something that's unstructured they're returning all of it and uh, there can be some lag with that um, those are things that areas of improvement they need to work on specifically okay let's let me show you this quick little Where's my mouse? <laughs> well, I know. 
for all those people that can use Unity without a mouse. It's fine, I'll just maximize this little. So this is an example of like it taking, if there's any, if you buy, get any pre-built assets, if you have games that are already utilizing any type of uh, chat or text, um, you can utilize their, AP, uh, their SDK to call through their Watson. What's kind of amazing about this is um, you can pretty much call any type of API. So I saw a really good example of, say you have a game and you're wanting to um, have a conversation with someone in the game, one of your non-playable characters, about something about Star Wars. So instead of you doing all the research for this, for Star Wars specifically, you can go in and just call like, I think it's called Wikipedia. It's like all the Star Wars, the database for like fandom. You can call that and grab it and have it return all of that data. So you don't have to do any of that and it makes it pretty impressive. All right, let's see if we can. If the demo gods have Lusty. It's hard to see. Um. Pew, pew, pew. That's the sound it makes. But so this is just a basic uh, Unity project already. So you can call your, um, your Watson commands. You can make it a terminal. You can make it interact with an NPC. Um, yeah, thanks. That makes it better. I guess my, my thing is I'm tired of using something that is like a, an actual chat bot or a terminal. I want to be able to utilize all of this with NPCs, with a actual conversation without spending all your time doing your, your animation, your, cine, your cine scenes, and produce titles like, you know, The Witcher that they do. Um, let me go back to... This is the strangest. Blah. It's backwards. All right, let's play with Watson. Okay. So first thing you do when you sign up, it'll say verify your email. You're going to verify your email and it's gonna have you um, launch into this basic tool. They have a few built-in features for things like your car that you could specifically use. Um, they wouldn't follow those paths. They do have a few more tutorials now. They're still not relevant to what we need to do. I can't see. Okay, workspaces. So here's this little one I said it's built-in. It's the car example. It says, hey, turn up the music. What music do you want to listen to? Oh, this genre. Oh, this, this. And it's just unnecessary. All right. I can't even see. Just pretend everything is spelled right. All right. Anybody know anything about, um, has anyone used any of chatbots for any type of business application solutions, anything in particular? Chatted with a bot, bought anything on Amazon. It was probably a bot. <laughs> yes, no? What's an intent? An intent. Okay. So we can give it an intent. So like originally, um, we're going to do in, I guess we can just do a general hello for now. If I can spell. So you can add a user example of what you think they would say if they were like chatting with your NPC. Now, the power behind this is you do not have to write Every situ like every di uh, dialogue situation, um, it even has something up in the top right hand corner. I think it says like fuzzy lo logic. Does it say that? I can't actually see. It has a thing. So if somebody spells something incorrectly, um, it it usually will pick up on it unless it's like a drastic different. It will also pick up on 
Um, if you say like hola, that's in Spanish, it'll pick up on things like that as well without needing the language translator. So you only need to give it a few examples for it to learn. Um, I'm from Texas, so we'll say howdy. Something like that. So you can do intense if you have um, like synonyms of a word specifically. I don't exactly have to do any of those. All right, the dialogue, this is the flow. So it'll say welcome. Oh. What does this say, welcome? I can't even see. That's so blurry. So you can add nodes and child nodes and extend these. Um, what I actually, so when you come in here, try it, it says something, hi. I mean, know what it did say something so they don't understand you. I'm standing up because I can't see. Yeah, so this is the built in one. So I'm sure you've seen this where it's like, hi, I don't understand you. Can you rephrase? So you don't want to have to go back in. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> he said, where's the mouse? Okay, so besides that, you can actually go and import um, like a CSV file. So they have one for Gwent, which is the card game that was in The Witcher 3. And it has all of the cards, what their actual, um, you know, their power is, their description. You can import that directly into Watson, and then it does everything for you. So. The internet? Okay. Let me show you one of the other ones really quick. didn't want to do something specific that, um, why is he shooting me? <laughs> We're on the same side. Ignore that part. So you could have that type of information if you didn't want to do any of, okay, listen dude. <laughs> if you didn't want to do any of the, um, you know, crazy scripting dialogue, you can utilize things like that from um, Watson specifically. If we can actually get to the, I'll show you my other one. Mm, sign in. Has anyone seen the specific, the, um, the one that they did for their Star Trek, I believe? It was the voice to text, I believe. What? I said log out. User error. Hang on. What the?
Do you remember your password? Oh, God. Oh, man. Hmm. What's the best way to do this? Hang on. Password one, two, three, four. <laughs> the password manager, yeah. Because if not, I pull off the password manager and you could see it. <laughs> So this one I have um, set up, obviously I have quite a few more intents, but I actually was able to, um, can you see right here where this little, this is, this is the uh, import. So you can import any type of um, CSV file. So if you actually worked for a company that maybe needed to import all of their documents for a research document, and they wanted to have a game where you chatted with some character or use uh, just an actual normal bot. By uploading all of those documents, uh, Watson can use Discovery to read and analyze these documents. As well, if you want to go a little bit step further, you can use their machine learning. Um, and companies like that, you know, the data and the reports. <laughs> okay, so. All right, the dialogue trees. So if you're doing anything um, specifically in Unity, usually you would have, um, hi, welcome to the forest. You're going to go left or right, and then the tree would split. So now you don't need to do that specifically in um, Watson. It just recognizes, hey, you have this conversation start, which would have your hi, hello, and then it will it will learn that if someone says howdy or anything similar to sounds like, they will use that. Um, I have, you can do some fancy uh, math stuff too in here too, but I wanna try it out. You can deploy these to Slack too, they're fun. So um, this is the one I was working with for um, in Unity, and it's like, it automatically will pop up when you're playing uh, your Gwent card game. And um, like if you came to the table in the game and says, hey, you know, I hear you're the last witcher and you hunt monsters. Do you want to try Gwent? So like, actually, I don't even know if this is going to be. Yeah. So it said no, because I don't have anything handled for the person to say no. They're only allowed to say yes. So it doesn't know what to do. So it thinks that, you know, it's like, oh, I can turn on the lights or play some music. It's like, I don't I don't care about those. It says no. So let's see. Yeah, so you can ask it what it can do. And it says, you know, it's trained for the Witcher world and tell you where the taverns and all this stuff is. All of this is extremely annoying and repetitive, especially if you're playing on a console and you're having to type all of this in. Nobody's going to do that. Why do you think people go through the cutscenes? Um, so what I've kind of been doing as far as some of my research is trying to really utilize and take the power of that's built in with Watson for this machine learning and uh, taking things in real time and events and kind of predicting. So, you know, based on you specifically for, and you're talking to this NPC, you know, you have 10 outcomes that could happen, but they're not just giving you information. It's like, you must go along yonder hill and rescue the princess. Like, they're not telling you what to do. That conversation needs to be a little more natural. And the player needs to feel that they're making an impact in the game. You don't want to give them a choice and then someone chooses the evil path, but it actually in no way affects the outcome of the game. 
that's completely un or unnecessary and annoying. So, but I want to go to Gwent. So these are the int uh, right here at Gwent specifically. So I had set it up that there are these values because in the in the card game each card has a, a separate value or power or what it can do. And then I put like, you know, this card is black blood. So if somebody were to type in vampire, destroy bra, any of these cards that they know what they're doing or they don't know what they're doing, it's gonna return you cards in the, the, same, the same class. Does that make, does that make sense? Play go fish and be like, here. Go fish. This is the this is the king's card. This is the queen's card, and this is I don't know all the other ones. The Joker. Yeah. Okay. Um, there was so another thing too. Um, objects are kind of given names sometimes. So, like the the horse in The Witcher is called Roach. So you know you're putting in things like that, so the computer will understand. Oh, there's the fuzzy matching that I was talking about. So this is if you misspell stuff. So let's, so if I just typed hello with one L, fate has been good to me, I'm doing good. All right, so if I say, okay, so how do I say hi in Italian? How do I, C-H? Like this? Yeah? yeah? Cool. So it recognized that that was still a greeting, and we did not put that in in an intent. So now it has learned that that is a greeting without me doing anything. It's kind of nice. Hang on. So anytime that you make a, um, a change, it will, up in the corner, it'll say Watson is training. Also be careful if you, when you get into a production environment, if you're, <laughs> before you start to go push all your changes, because we had a situation and uh, with one of our hardware engineers and we were doing stuff and we thought it would be really funny that anytime his name was mentioned, the bot would always reply with an inappropriate comment. And we thought it was really funny, but guess what? It's in production and now it had already been learning. So now anytime like his name was mentioned, it was, yeah, we thought it was funny until like we had to fix all this stuff. Cause it is actually affecting like other situations too. So it was, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> all right, so we turned that off. So now what's the other? Yeah. All right, give me something in another. Sp okay, so hola, which is in Spanish. Yep, still recognize a greeting. All right, another language. Other language. This says hi, hello. Okay. Oh. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Is this a trick question? Oh, okay. I T like this. P. Mm -hmm. So it didn't understand that, but let's see. Okay, so I saved. So what will happen is it will, you can get, um, when you start, when you push it to production, you'll see all these intents and you can see what people are asking it and what you can just uh, return. Apparently Jenny at IBM wants to talk to us. Should we talk? All right, um, now let's see if it, same thing. If I can spell. Yeah, so after one time it learned, but we had to categorize it like that. So in that situation where I said, um, we had it whenever you typed in our, our hardware engineer's name, it was categorized as something else and returned a silly, stupid comment. And it started to think that's exactly what it was supposed to say every time. So, which, which makes it funny. So let's say. Hmm. 
Hmm. So I asked it to play music. So I have words in there that are specific for like witch hunt, anything that has to do um, with Witcher. Like I said, it just went upload an entire CV of like words that, you, or you can also grab things from like a, if any of the like Wikipedia for Star Wars has an API, you can call the their, that API directly as well. Okay, so let's see what else we can do. No, oh. no music. So this is another thing that's kind of interesting. Um, I haven't played around too much, but it has that I had a negative response. So there is empathy in there. Um, and the empathy is based on your tone, you know, if you're typing in all caps. Um, I haven't played around with it too much. It works much better if you're doing um, voice, to, voice to text. But I, I mean, I have no reason to, was to specifically use that. Yeah, but it says, you know, it'll categorize and say, oh, it's negative. Let's see what else we can ask. So, we'll say, so see, it starts to develop like a, a personality and that's kind of something that I've always been very intrigued with, especially with like NPCs. Um, that they have their own personality because then when you're playing this game, it matters, you know, if they if they die or if you've killed them. Anyways, I guess I'm like out of time and I didn't, but I am gonna upload a lot of this stuff to GitHub, and I didn't get to go over like where you need to put your um, API keys in your script, but um, I wouldn't want to give you mine anyways because. Um, does anyone have any questions why I'm like snooping around trying to find this real quick for you? Mm, let's make a new script. Hi. And the, you mentioned that there are uh, some other services that will do what Watson do. So yes. basically, I, I know Dialogflow dialog from Google, uh, Lex from uh, AWS. Can you tell me if you have tried uh, all of them, uh, which one is the better and uh, what are the pros or the cons? Because um, we are interested in building a bot uh, for business yeah, environment. A a as far as uh, AD AWS is cheaper, that is actually what we use, but they specifically said I couldn't talk about that. Watson is fairly easy to get up and running. Um, I think their Unity documentation is still crap, but... Um, <laughs> They they changed some stuff. So the VR sandbox specifically used to have like a nice fancy little button in uh, Unity that was like up you know up here, and then you could put in your uh, credentials for your API key, your URL, um, and then they did they just took it out and didn't tell anyone. And I complained on GitHub, and they they're like, oh, we're not going to put that in anymore. So I feel they have some frustrations they need to to work out. And also, as far as pricing goes, the free tier, you are limited. Um, so say I wanted to have two workspaces that had one conversation, one was a language um, understanding. Those are not together. Those are separate. So actually, for this demo, because I was trying to just do one from scratch just to show you, I had to create another account because I couldn't add another one because I was in the light plan. But I didn't want to use something that costs money and then show you a demo and then you go home and be like, well, this sucks. Now I got to spend money to, to do it. But yeah, you could, like I said, you easily can just import um, the Watson um, SDK in here, create a script, and you add your, your keys. Um, oh, crap. It's probably past time, but it's okay. They can wait. Um, Hang on, I can't even see. Where is it? All 
All right. So if you do do that specifically... Oh. Listen, I only got three hours of sleep last night. <laughs> okay, can you see that? Um, so when you have your, say you just want the text to show up in Watson, since that part is very easy, you can actually just go in and instead of having your sky box, you just make it a solid background in Unity. That's probably the, the very first tutorial. Of, that's their hello world. So, um, And then you just add a canvas with uh, your text. And then um, the saddest child of them all, an empty one. And yeah, and then you just uh, attach your script to it. And the text will just display. It won't look pretty and it won't be fancy. But if you can utilize like all of their APKs, uh, not APKs, their... I'm having a technical day. <laughs> Hang on. Um, have you done anything with the uh, TensorFlow or anything? Mm -hmm. So I use some of the stuff. Um, IBM also does have a visual recognition okay. as well that you can use. Um, it gets a little bit different because if you're using that for Unity and your game uh, is targeted to kids under 13, there's a few different, or at least for the United States, there's different restrictions uh, yeah, on that. Okay, here we go. Yeah, so the, the assistant is what the conversation was. They've renamed it. I don't know why, specifically. Um, but here is the, um, their studio, which is their, uh, their training and their analyzing of data, their own machine learning, and this knowledge center. And this is this knowledge center that I was talking about as far as, like, especially for research and medical. Like, I know that for hospitals, a lot of um, companies are using some type of database like this to analyze or treat or diagnose or create some new pills. But um, the discovery and the discovery news is something that I have been playing with and I just got some stuff from um, Twitter as well. And that is based on like, say your geo, say you're playing your mobile app on your phone, based on your geo location and tweets that are update or relevant or had more, this hashtag of this in the past 20 minutes, you can get real-time conversation. And that could be pretty cool or scary, I guess. But um, yeah, and then the natural language understanding as well as the language conversion. But on the free version, you can't have the language conversion and the conversation together. And to have two separate workspaces, you can't be in the light or free plan. So uh, it's a good, a good base to get up and running. Here, they have the visual recognition, speech to text. They have stuff for the VR. The insights and the tone analyzer. So say you had a, a product that you were trying to sell um, and you wanted to pretty much see everyone on the internet if they had negative things to say about it or bad things to say about it, you can, fi you can find that stuff out. So yeah, so hopefully that'll... Kind of, I'll put some of this stuff up there on, on GitHub and um, you guys can play around or put your own API key, keys in there specifically. Um, yeah, but just think of if you can use this dialogue in this, um, you know, structured dialogue for your animations, you'll will make your lives much better. You'll have games and they'll, they'll look like The Witcher. That's what I, I just remember seeing that. I was like, holy crap, that's genius. Because we used to just write like, like sticky notes and they'd be all around and they'd be like this is the dialogue of the story that's going to happen and then you code every single one and then you find that one art friend that you have and you're like please do all my art and my animation so instead of doing that you have 35 animation it's like having a little lego block so you can have about these little things for the example but um yeah you have one one little foundation that you can make all of these things from it's pretty amazing. Okay, cool. If y'all have questions, y'all can bother me after. Oh, I have some, some, some things I forgot to give y'all. But I have uh, the shirts, the 8-bit shirts. And I also have um, some Raspberry Pi Zero Ws that um, 
I have done some work with for Unity to actually ha um, integrate them, if you guys want to play around with those. They're kind of fun. They got built-in Wi-Fi, and you can power them through a micro USB. They're pretty cool. All right, come bother me. <laughs> Thank you all very much. <laughs> okay. Thank you.